And there we have it, the fastest E36 engine build I have ever done in my entire life. It took me about four seconds. It doesn't have a head gasket or pistons or rods or an oil pump or an oil pan or a valve cover gasket or any timing gears or timing chain. The main one is hanging down. It's missing most of the engine, but that's okay because this bad man pajama ain't gonna run. Today we're gonna be talking about oil leaks and I'm gonna use this as a learning tool today. So today I'm gonna to be doing my semi-annual undercarriage cleaning on my sedan to combat oil leaks. If you have an E36, there's a very, 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 very good chance that your car is leaking or seeping oil, and we're gonna talk about the difference between seeping and leaking. And we're gonna use this big old Johnny here to show you guys where some typical leak spots are, how to combat them, and just kind of just general talking about oil leaks. For those wondering, this is an M50 B25 block, crank, M50 head, and an M52 valve cover. It's like half an engine and it looks complete and it's gonna work for this purpose just fine. If you are new to E36s, welcome to the crew. If you've had one for quite some time, there's a good chance that yours leaks oil. Oil leaks are not something really anyone wants to admit because pretty much all of us have it. We have quite a few E36s here at the house and about half of them have oil leaks. The main offender is my daily driven, very clean 1997 E36 M3 sedan and Alex's 325 has an oil leak which we are going to address very shortly. His is leaking oil, my M3 sedan is seeping oil. The bucket, which is the black convertible that you guys just saw and then the Cheeto, the red 318 drift car are the only two cars here that do not have oil leaks at all. This is because both of those cars, like this motor, have been down to a bare engine block and back, fully rebuilt rings, bearings, all new gaskets all the way around, full engine rebuilds, and if you rebuild an engine, it tends not to leak. So there's that. Alex's 325, we have done a ton of work to it. It doesn't have new rings or new bearings, but we've done pretty much everything. So his is an oil leak which we're going to be addressing and it is an actual leak, it's not seeping. My sedan has 212,000 miles on it at this point, full factory motor. I've never taken the valve cover off, just bought it, drove it, runs mint, seeps a little bit of oil, I deal with it, such is life. It does leak oil and if your car seeps or leaks oil, you shouldn't be ashamed. It's just part of the game, you know? Especially with owning a BMW. Now, as for the difference between leaking and seeping, leaking is more of an active activity, seeping is more of a passive activity. So with Alex's car, his car is leaking from the valve cover gasket. It is leaking from the back over here on the back of the cylinder head. It is dripping down the back of the cylinder head and it is hitting the exhaust manifold and it is leaking. After about 10 to 15 minutes of him driving the car, it starts to smoke because that oil is getting all over the hot exhaust manifolds and just starting to smoke out of the hood, which is something we need to fix. And if you leave it running for about half an hour, not only will it be smoking, but you will have oil drips dripping onto the ground. That is a leak. If it is actively leaking, it, if it is actively dripping oil or you know, if it's, if it's actually leaking, then it's considered an oil leak. My M3 sedan is different. It does have an oil leak, but it's more of a seep. So it's leaking from the oil pan gasket and the timing cover gasket. And if I found out that the oil filter housing gasket is seeping, I would not be surprised. It is more of a passive leak than an active leak. So what I mean by that is I do my oil change intervals about every 5,000 miles. I've been running 1040 in the summer, 2050 in the winter in that car. It drops about half a quart between oil changes. So every 5,000 miles, I'm seeping about half a quart of oil through, which means that oil is coming through the timing cover gasket, through the oil pan gasket. It's not dripping onto the ground, it's just dripping onto the timing cover, onto the oil pan, and running down under onto the subframe of the steering rack, and sometimes on the back of the transmission. Seeping oil is, it's leaking oil, but it's not really leaking oil. You are getting oil all over the motor and on the pan and on the timing cover. 
but it's not dripping onto the ground. This is more of a passive leak. This is something that you can deal with and depending on where it's leaking from, you just kind of live with it. So with Alex's, we are going to be upgrading the valve cover. His is an M50B25 and they do have magnesium valve covers and the valve cover gasket design isn't as good as say an M52 valve cover. So this is the M52 valve cover he picked up. We are gonna be putting this on his M50B25. We have done that mod or the conversion on the Cheeto. It's pretty much a direct bolt on. The only thing is, is the ignition coil studs are a little bit different or the holes for the ignition coil studs. So you kind of have to run the studs like a little bit jank, but you can get them to bolt up just fine. Aside from that, the gasket seating is direct bolt on. The cylinder heads are pretty much the same casting. And it's a very good, very common fix for M50s, especially since the valve covers on those, they don't look nearly as good as a plastic cover does. So that's a very common upgrade. And we're gonna be doing that on his car very soon. And we will finally be doing a valve cover gasket DIY on that car because a lot of you guys have been asking for a valve cover gasket DIY for quite some time. So back to active versus passive. I kind of like to think of a passive leak as sweating. So think of like the oil pan gasket as sweating, not so much leaking. Um, the only leak that the Cheeto does have our red 318 drift car is the power steering pump is sweating fluid and it really doesn't drip at all actually. We clean it off usually before every event and after we'll look at the power steering pump and it won't be dripping fluid but it will have fluid on the underside of it and just kind of covering it and a little bit back towards the oil filter housing and just kind of generally where it's mounted. But it's not actively dripping. Um, we are gonna be replacing the power steering pump at some time to prevent it from doing that more because ATF is kind of a dirty dirty fluid and it catches on fire if it gets super hot, which is not something you want from a drift car. So aside from that, the power steering system can leak from the rack seals. They can leak through that. Usually you'll see the boots on the bottom of the steering rack get wet. It can leak from fittings from the reservoir. So they just have little hoses that plug in. You got clamps there so you can reclamp those. And it will leak from the crush washers on the actual lines, either on the lines to the pump or the lines going from the pump to the rack or from the pump to the reservoir or, or from the rack to the reservoir. So there are a couple places that those like to sweat fluid from. And replacing the O-rings and the crush washers is not that big of a deal. Now we're just gonna run through some other things that can leak real quickly. Aside from the engine, you can have your transmission leaking and you can have your differential leaking. Differentials will leak from a couple of places. The case, where the cover bolts onto the case, you can have leaks there. I believe they use a paper gasket. I tend to use like Fitpig or RTV when I'm resealing this. They can leak from the output shaft seals on the sides. Those are oil seals and you can replace those and they can leak from the front pinion seal. So the front pinion seal is a little bit more challenging to replace than the side output shaft seals or the cases. Either way, the diff does have to come out if you're gonna be doing the pinion seal or the case seal. The output shaft seals on the side, you can replace with those in the car. Aside from that, they can be leaking from the fill plug or the drain plug. Those do have crush washers that can be replaced fairly easily. So that is your output shaft oil seal. This is where the output flange goes. Your case gasket goes around there. As you can see, some of the old RTV from when we sealed it the previous time. So here is a differential with the output flanges on. So you'll have fluid leaking through there. And then the front pinion seal will leak right through here. If your front input shaft seal starts leaking on the differential and you don't know how to handle rebuilding a diff, I would not recommend doing that. These bearings take a certain type of preload in order to get it to work correctly. Otherwise you'll be spinning bearings and having issues with that. So if your diff is leaking from the front pinion seal, I would definitely pull it out and send it into someone who knows what they're doing with that. Aside from that, the case seal and the output shaft seals are pretty straightforward and not that hard to do. Powen has a really good DIY on the output shaft seals. I will link his channel down below if you need to do that. And then aside from that, the case, pretty much just pop it off clean it off good, lay a beta RTV, put the cover back on and torque it all down. And the transmission can leak. Usually you'll have either an output shaft seal, which will leak from the back of the transmission onto the ground. They'll have the shift shaft seal, which is a little O-ring, kind of little O-ring oil seal that sits over the shifter rod where it meets into the case. And then you can have an input shaft seal, which will leak from the front of the belt housing down. So if you're leaking oil and it's either red or it smells like ATF, 
the transmission uses ATF, some of them use heavyweight gear oil. Um, so just note what kind of fluid is coming out and if you don't know, ask someone who does. You can usually take a sample, you can take it down to like an auto shop and one of the guys can tell you. Gear oil, especially used gear oil, has a very distinct smell and so does ATF. So if you're leaking some sort of fluid from the transmission area and you don't know if it's the rear main oil pan or the transmission, you can take a fluid sample down to someone who knows what they're talking about or knows their fluid types and asks them. Um, aside from that, fill plugs and drain plugs on transmissions can leak. They are tapered fittings and if you put them on too tight too many times, that taper will start to not seal as well. And aside from that, it's possible for it to leak through the case. I have never seen a transmission leaking through the case, but it is possible. Here we have the shift shaft seal. That is that seal right there. Your output shaft seal of the transmission will be here. And the input shaft seal is up underneath kind of about here-ish on the transmission and usually you'll see them start to leak way up here because the fluid will drip down on the car and kind of run this way. Now on to the big mamma jamma, the motor itself. So engines are very complicated and there's a lot going on here and there's a lot of things that can and do leak oil. So some of the main offenders are this guy right here, this is your oil filter housing and your valve cover. The valve cover can leak in a lot of different places. Usually it'll leak on the back side of the motor where the exhaust manifold is. Sometimes it can seep along the edges. A lot of critical spots are where the vanos, so where you have three parts meeting. So here we have the valve cover, the cylinder head, and the vanos unit. That little junction there is a hot ticket spot to leak. So you'll put a little bit of RTV on that line. So when it meets there, it has to seal that entire corner between these three pieces and sometimes it doesn't do the job very well, so you just put a little bit of RTV there. It will leak on the half moons on the back of the valve cover. So here we have the half moons and a gasket will fill in that gap. So Alex is leaking from the bottom of the half moon down onto the exhaust manifolds and causing smoke. But what you can do is when you replace the valve cover gasket, you put a little dab of RTV on each of the corners up here and then I'll usually solve that issue. Aside from that, sometimes it does happen. It is kind of rare, but it does happen. The plastic valve covers will crack. Aside from that, magnesium valve covers on the OBD1 cars, when they get too hot, the magnesium tends to warp. And so you can have a valve cover that doesn't sit straight or flush and you won't really be able to see it. If you have an OBD1 motor that has a magnesium valve cover, this is common on five series, the E34s with the V8s in them the valve covers will actually warp and no matter how many times you replace a valve cover gasket it will still leak because the valve cover is warped and it's not getting a good surface. I don't know if the E36s do, I would imagine that they do that especially if you have a motor that's run, been run hot before it can do that and the plastic valve covers will crack very rarely so that does happen. I have a valve cover up on the wall over here that's a display piece because it did crack where the gasket meets and I couldn't get it to couldn't get it to seal no matter what I did. So, so I bit the bullet and bought a new one from the junkyard for like 30 bucks, big expense, and that solved the problem. So the oil filter housing, the gasket there does like to seep or leak. You will have oil coming down underneath through the oil pan. It'll almost look like the oil pan gasket is leaking. The oil filter housing is not that bad of a job to do. You do have to remove the alternator and you have to pull the power steering pump off of it and then you can pull it off. Aside from that, it will leak right here if you mess up an oil change and get that to seal incorrectly it will leak from there you can leak from the oil pressure switch which is this little guy right here you can have leaks from the vanos fittings so the fitting here this line has crush washers on it with a banjo bolt you also have another set of crush washers and a banjo bolt back here and it can leak from the plug so it kind of has like freeze plugs i'll get a shot of that in a second and those I have had those leak on my cars before, so if you're doing the oil filter housing gasket and you've done it like a couple of times and no matter what you do, you can't get it to seal and it seems like it's still leaking, it might be leaking from those plugs. So what you do is you take the snap ring out, you pull the plug out, replace the o-ring that's in there, you can put a little bit of Fitbit or RTV if you really want to, cram it back in and send it. I don't want to get too DIY on this video. But as you can see, we have a ridge up here on that. So if you stick that in, so we can dig that snap ring out. And to wiggle him out, as you can see, we have an O-ring right here. You can replace that O-ring and put a little bit of RTV on there. 
Push that guy back into place. There you go. A quick hot tip for you guys, if those are leaking, very simple, very easy to do. And all you need is a pair of pliers, a pick, and a new O-ring. So you can see where the oil filter housing bolts to the block. There's a gasket under there that does like to leak. Here we have our banjo bolt. So that guy does have a crush washer. You can see the crush washer right there. There's one on each side, as does the joint where it meets the Vanos unit itself. Here we have the oil pressure switch, or pressure sensor if you want to call it a sensor. It's not really a sensor, it's more of a switch. And then on the back here we have the freeze, freeze plugs for the oil filter housing. And those do have O-rings on it. Over time they will get old and start to crack and they can start to seep and you will have oil coming down and this is at a slant, the engine is slanted so you have oil kind of dripping down this way and it'll look like the oil filter housing is leaking but it's actually these guys. So you have one here and you have one here. So that's another easy one to do. The valve cover is a pretty easy one and the oil pan and timing cover are a whole nother mission. You can have oil leaks and oil seeping from the cylinder head gasket. Coolant can also come from there too. Vanos solenoid, I don't know if those leak oil. If you do take it off, Oil does come out, so I would imagine that it could leak oil. And then the Vanos gasket itself for the Vanos unit can leak oil. You can have oil leaking from the plugs on the front of the Vanos. Those have crush washers. Those are fairly easy to replace. And then you have the front and rear main seals that can seep oil. Here we have the rear main seal. So as you can tell, this is a standalone aluminum housing that bolts onto the block. So that does have a crush gasket on the back there. The bottom is sealed by the oil pan gasket and there's an oil seal in there, much like the front main. You can buy this entire housing and seal unit as one, and that's probably one of the better ways to do it because you are replacing that gasket as well. Aside from that, you can take the housing off, replace that gasket, pound the seal out, and put a new one in. And here we have the front main seal. So this one is actually not that bad to get to. You just have to pull the Jesus bolt off and the pulley off, so which means you gotta take your belt off. And then that guy can be replaced. And then here we have the timing cover. So the timing cover comes up around the water pump. So this gasket does seal water and engine oil. And that meets on the cylinder head and then down on the side. And then the bottom is sealed by the oil pan. So in some unfortunate cases, I have seen some guys actually crack the timing cover. That sucks. I don't know how that happens, but that can cause an oil leak. As you can tell on this motor, the timing cover gasket was sweating, and so this is what I mean by sweating. So it's just kind of buildup of dirt and crusty old oil. It probably wasn't actively leaking, but it was just seeping. Here we have the Vanos gasket itself, where it meets onto the cylinder head. It runs along that. And then you have these oil plugs, which do have crush washers on them, and sometimes those will seep. The timing chain tensioner, which is right here, also has a crush washer on it, and those I haven't seen them leak that often. More times they will leak if you don't put a crush washer on there, but a majority of the time they'll seal just fine. So now to the fun part. So I think there are a couple of other spots that these motors can leak oil from. I probably didn't get every single one of them, but I feel like I covered a majority of the good big ticket spots that these do seep or leak oil from. Addressing and fixing the oil leak. So not all oil leaks are created equal, remember that. And it depends on where it's leaking and how bad it's leaking as to what action you can take. If you have something like a timing cover or an oil pan gasket that is seeping just a tiny bit, there are a couple of tricks you can do. The first one is you can go in and try and tighten the bolts a little bit more, just snug the oil pan or snug the timing cover down to try and get that to seal a little bit better. Do be careful though because you do risk snapping the bolts if you go in with too much force, so just give them a little tiny, just a little tiny around to get that gasket to seat a little bit better. You can run a higher weight oil, so if you're running like 530, you might try switching up to 1040 or a 2050, especially if it has a higher mileage, if it is a higher mileage engine, so that will help reduce the amount of seepage that you get from that. So if you have a valve cover gasket that's leaking pretty bad, like an Alex's car, we're going to go in and fix that. So we're going to put a new valve cover on, a new valve cover gasket, and get that thing seated properly. His oil leak is causing drivability concerns because the car does smoke after you drive it for about 15 minutes and that's not good. We don't want a fire or anything else and just having your car smoking when you're driving 
every time you drive it is not a good thing to have. So we're gonna go in and fix that. The oil filter housing is another pretty fairly easy one. If you're somewhat mechanically inclined, it's not too bad to replace. The valve cover gasket and the oil filter housing gasket can be done in an afternoon with some friends. If you know what you're doing, you know how to get in there and just get it done. Things like the cylinder head gasket leaking or seeping, the timing cover or the oil pan gasket leaking and seeping is another caliber of issue because that is a more heavy labor intensive job. To do the oil pan gasket with the motor in the car, you have to support the weight of the engine in the chassis because it is bolted to the subframe and the subframe does have to come out in order to access the oil pan gasket. That is the same on E46s. I believe it's the same on E30s. I'm not too sure. Pretty much most of the six cylinder BMWs, the front subframe has to come out. So you're taking the control arm off of the spindle, you're taking the lollipop bushings off of the chassis and you're dropping the subframe completely out of the car to get access. So you do have to have a brace Usually you'll brace it against the shock towers to keep the weight of the engine up because you can't unbolt the subframe with the engine on it still. So you gotta undo the engine mounts, drop that, and then you can start working on the oil pan itself. Um, in the case of mine, it is seeping from the oil pan gasket and the timing cover gasket. It isn't seeping that bad. I clean it fairly regularly. I only need to clean it maybe every six, seven, or eight months because it's not leaking that bad. That is a leak that I have just kind of chosen to live with because it is the oil pan gasket and the timing cover gasket and the thing is is that motor has 215,000 miles on it so the head gasket is also seeping a tiny bit of coolant i've never had to top it off since i rebuilt the cooling system like maybe a year and a half ago but i can see coolant residue on the outside of the block where the head meets so i do know it's leaping seeping to some degree so it is seeping a little bit of coolant it's not bad at all so i'm not super worried about it but if I were to go in and replace the oil pan gasket and the timing cover gasket, I'm going to have the timing cover off. I would want to do the timing chains, the timing guides, and the head gasket, and now, you know, it's down to a bare block, and might as well pull it out and re-ring it and put new bearings and all that stuff, and now we're just talking about a full engine rebuild. So it, for me, would very quickly snowball into just a full engine rebuild, which is a lot more expensive and a lot more labor intensive than just replacing the timing cover and gasket, but I would feel bad going that deep into an engine and not replacing the chains and guides and all that good stuff. So, and if I'm gonna pull the head off, you know, might as well send it in and have new stem seals put in, and it just kind of snowballs quickly into a full engine rebuild for me. So that car runs and drives fine. I can live with the oil seepage that it has. If it was pissing oil like really badly, I would probably get in there and fix the whole thing. And that's just something you gotta live with. If the oil leak isn't that bad and it's not actively leaking terrible, you can live with it. Just wash it down. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that fairly soon. My opinion on fix it in a bottle is they just plain out don't work. I mean, adding like a Lucas oil stabilizer to a heavier weight oil might yield you a little bit of results, but don't buy no freaking head gasket in a can and expect it to fix your motor completely because that is not the way to do it. The truth is if it's leaking pretty badly you just got to get in there and get it done and that's all there is to it. So another quick notable spot that these motors can leak oil from is from the crankcase ventilation or the PCV system or the CCV system whatever you want to call it. It is the engine oil separator so that will have a tube coming off of the valve cover it'll kind of come down into a PCV valve. So that is your oil separator valve. It separates oil vapors from liquid oil and there's a return pipe on the bottom about here-ish that runs down to the dipstick tube and the oil separator itself can crack and just become worn and the seal stop working. So that will seep oil. Also this line, the plastic line here can crack and you'll have oil vapors just kind of coming out and that'll kind of show up more as like an oil seep than an actual oil leak. Same thing with the PCV valve itself is dripping. It can drip some liquid oil, just like a tiny bit. And then the hose going down to the dipstick can crack and cause leaks. And then you can have the dipstick tube itself has a little o-ring at the base of the oil pan that seals that up and that can leak as well. The side of the dipstick does bolt to the intake manifold so you don't have to pull the manifold off. You just unbolt it from there unclip the line from the bottom of the PCV system and slide the dipstick out to the top. You can replace the O-ring, put a little bit of grease on there, clean the oil pan, stuff it back in there. And they do sell PCV rebuild kits for I think a couple hundred bucks, probably under that, that you can rebuild the entire PCV system lines, 
and the valve itself. So usually if you have a PCV leak or if this line is cracked, the plastic line up here is cracked, or the PCV system seals are bad, you'll have a vacuum leak, which will kind of cause it to run weird or not idle right, or you'll have some PCV codes. Here's the discoloration from the magnesium valve cover. And these do like to warp. I don't think that's what's happening in this case. I think the gasket is just failing to seat. If you look on the exhaust manifold, you can see a color difference. So right there is a much deeper color and that's more of a dry, lighter rustic color. So that deep color is actually where the oil is leaking onto. From the back of the valve cover here, it's going down onto the exhaust manifold and starting to smoke. Aside from that, everything else on this engine is sealing well. The timing cover and the oil pan are not leaking. It is just from the valve cover itself. So here's an OBD-1 PCV setup. So they can seep from the gasket in that little clip there. And then you have your PCV lines that are running down to the manifold. These cars do not have a PCV valve like the OBD-2 car does. That does not mean that these lines cannot sweat. They can and do sweat oil. So here we have my 97 M3 sedan. Alpine white beauty and it is running an m50 manifold conversion, but the PCV setup is the same So there is an o-ring on the back of this plastic fitting On the line itself and as you can tell mine is starting to sweat So I should look into replacing that fairly soon. So that's what it looks like when it starts to sweat You can tell that it's getting a little bit wet and moist It looks almost like oil is dripping onto it, but you can't really tell where it's coming from It's actually coming from that o-ring and when the PCV system vents It's venting as oil vapor and that oil vapor collects and just kind of condenses on there And it's starting to get a little bit onto the valve cover grommets back there and here we have the Vanos hose so the crush washer Looks like it's starting to seep at the top up here. You can see the line getting a little bit of oil vapor and oil on it. So that's what it looks like when your lines are sweating. And sometimes these lines themselves can sweat from the fitting, from the junction fitting onto the actual rubber hose itself from the metal. So these aren't that bad. I will probably be doing a full engine rebuild at some point on this car, so I'm not super worried about fixing all these tiny little leaks right now. This car will have its time to do fun engine overhaul stuff. Now on to cleaning. So I do have the car up on a set of wheel ramps right now so we can get a little bit easier access to the undercarriage of the car so the front end is lifted up. It's going to make it a little bit easier to clean. Obviously if your car is slammed you're not going to be able to climb under it like this. For a lot of us this is a fairly common sight. So we have oil coming off of the oil pan and the timing cover down. It's coating the steering rack, coating my x brace, the back of the oil pan and if you look way back there Oil is starting to build up on the front end of the catalytic converter. So this car doesn't drip oil ever. I have not cleaned this thing in about 10 months. So for 10 months of daily driving, this isn't actually that bad. Um, when you have oil leaks like this, a lot of times it will stain the components. So you have oil stains on the oil pan, on the steering rack, and just really, really tough, hard buildup. If you really want this thing to be perfectly immaculate clean, it's going to take a lot of work. We're just gonna do a very quick, not so much quick, but a, a, not a super thorough clean. We're just gonna kind of clean everything off as best as we can. We're not gonna spend six hours doing it. This will probably take 20-ish minutes. So for 10 months of daily driving, driving this thing multiple times every single day, this actually isn't that bad. It was about maybe a quarter of a quart low. Um, I do run a lot of oil in this motor. So these motors take, I believe it's 6.5 quarts out of the gate. So I am running an oil cooler on this that takes an additional two quarts of oil. And I run my motors, pretty much all of my motors are quart high anyways. So instead of 6.5 quarts, I put 9.5 quarts in this. It's a lot of oil and I would not run that much oil with out an oil cooler or a modified oiling system like that because there's two quarts of oil in the oil cooler and the lines in the cooler itself it can run that much oil of course you got to prime the cooler so you're not you know when i do an oil change i'm not putting 9.5 quarts in immediately i'm putting seven in then i'll prime the cooler then top it off with the extra two and 
get it dialed in to the oil level is correct and then i'll add another quart on top of that e36s love to run a quart high especially the six cylinder cars so being a quarter of a quart low out of a nine and a half quart system isn't really that bad so to start we're going to take a paper towel and just get some of the low hanging fruit here like the steering wipe off some of the power steering lines the bottom of the subframe just the easy stuff to grab on the X brace on the back here wipe down the pan a little bit I'm not going for precision here or really to focus on one spot I'm just kind of grabbing as much as I can get so next up I have a spray bottle here so this has water and regular dish soap I think this is Costco dish soap and we're just gonna kind of spray everything down and then we're gonna hose it off real good um, obviously you don't want to be spraying up into the engine you want to avoid some of the electronics the closest thing hanging down here that's electronic or electric would be probably the AC compressor or the crank sensor so I'm not gonna spray like up into the engine bay I'm just gonna kind of coat the bottom you want to get the subframe you want to get the oil pan the cross brace if you have one the front of the rack you can try and get up underneath the oil pan between the steering rack the subframe and the pan. I'm going to spray the back of the X-Brace. I'm going to hit the transmission. All there is on the transmission, if yours is a manual, is the reverse light switch and I'm not really too worried about that. Of course, everything up here is sealed, so you're not really risking getting any soap or water inside of the transmission or inside of the engine. And if you think it's bad for your car, kind of think of it like, I mean, you're driving through a puddle, right? Water's getting on the underside of the car and just, you know, driving out when it rains, water kind of gets everywhere. So this is not really abnormal for the undercarriage of a car. We're just gonna soak everything good. Let it sit. So this is gonna start to break up some of the bigger chunks and some of the lighter stuff. If you give it a good spritz, you can see some of the oil will kind of break apart by the force of the spritz. Let's see where's a good chunk that we can hit. So the side of the rack here, just me spraying soap on it hard is gonna break up some of the chunks and start to get it to clear out. Now I've got a hose, I've got it set to jet. And we're going to hit everything good. We're going to hit the cat a bunch, the underside of the transmission. Get up under the oil pan. Again, you don't want to be spraying directly up into the engine bay. Just kind of glaze it across the bottom and get get it up kind of high when you can but try and avoid any of the main engine electronics and all that stuff that's really up high so i've hit it probably three or four times with the soap and then rinsing it off with the hose and re-soaping it so about three or four cycles and as you guys can tell it's looking a lot cleaner than it was before a lot of the buildup on the rack and the lines are gone it looks nice and clean we got nothing hanging off any of the lines the cross brace is much cleaner, the subframe is much cleaner, the oil pan looks good. Up here, there's still some buildup higher up and on the middle section of the oil pan, but I'm not super worried about that. It looks way better than it was before, and this is super simple. It took me like maybe 15, 20 minutes. The catalytic converter down there is cleaner, the transmission is clean. Everything looks really good. So another thing you can do to take it a step further if you have compressed air, is blow all of this stuff with compressed air. This will help it dry, get the water off, and it'll help break up some of the bigger oil and sludge buildups. So obviously having a compressor that runs at a higher PSI is going to be better for this application because it's going to blow a lot harder. 
I don't know if you guys could tell, but some of the bigger chunks were kind of breaking up as I was hitting it with the air. And after that, hit it with soap and run it with water again to kind of clean out and flush all of that stuff that got broken up and just kind of settled somewhere else. Obviously, this isn't perfect. I mean, it's not completely spotless, but unless you take everything apart and really hit it with a parts washer or spend some serious time under here cleaning the stuff, it's not going to be perfect. So... This is pretty good, I think. This is about as detailed as my regular cleanings for the undercarriage gets. It takes me maybe 20, 30 minutes to get it this clean. So I've been cleaning it like this for maybe three or four years. So each time I progressively clean it, it just like continuously gets, you know, marginally better until it starts looking pretty good. Good luck with your oil leak endeavors. Be smart and be wise. Obviously, if you're gonna pressure wash the underside of your car like that, do be smart about it. Don't be an idiot and do it at your own risk. I have never had an issue washing the undercarriage like that, but if you're stupid and you start spraying up and start spraying from the engine bay down, like on the electronics, on the injectors, on the MAF, on that stuff, on the coils, you might run into some issues. So be smart about it. Don't be stupid. Let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comment section or if any advice I can give you that I haven't covered in this. So let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh and I'll see you guys later.